it is Wednesday, hey man, June 27th, getting close to the 4th of July, a bunch of street preachers are going to try to get a thing together, probably go to Seaside Beach, anybody want to go to Seaside Beach and get to meet some of the evangelists, uh, come on out, it'd be great to have you um, share the gospel in your way, praise God, but anyway, speaking of sharing the gospel, speaking of being a witness for the Holy Spirit, for, for the gospel, I believe that um, when it comes to real strength in the spirit, that there ought to be uh, a whole lot less macho and a whole lot more confidence in the spirit. There's a very, very big difference. Sometimes they're hard to discern, uh, but quickly you should be able to discern whether someone's preaching under the arm of the flesh or they're preaching in the spirit of the kingdom of God. Amen. Something really weird just happened. Um, there was a butterfly I'm cruising down the freeway. The beach is behind me, cruising in about a half an hour away from the beach. And there's a butterfly, a big, very gorgeous butterfly, just flew right into my um, window and it landed um, in the uh, wiper. I mean, it got caught right in the wiper thing. And I could still see his wings there. And I was like, shoot, he must be dead. But then I didn't know. So I was like, you know what? I need to be sensitive. I need to find a place to pull over as quick as I could safely. And I did. I pulled over. I was like, shoot, that, that's right. I need to be sensitive about little things. Because I know that the Holy Ghost is exceedingly grieved. Easily, easily grieved. And he's exceedingly particular. He's exceedingly specific. He's exceedingly delicate. And he's exceedingly particular about the details. So I felt like the Lord was showing me something there, as, as horrible as that was. All the other bugs, of course, they never survived. That one didn't die. And I drove maybe a half mile trying to find a place to pull over, and I did. And uh, I, I, I pulled him out of the thing, and he started moving his body around, and he went to the ground and tried to pick him up, and he wouldn't let me pick him up, so he started kind of getting crazy. And I just left him alone. The wind is blowing him around, and he's going to have a chance to kind of recover from all, all that shaking that he went through, which is amazing that he was not dead. But uh, praise God, I was just like, you know, that's kind of like the, the, the sense I get when I'm standing in a place of, of a real confidence in the Holy Spirit. And that's what it's all about. I mean, there's nothing in the world history, amen, where you ever see God's people ever overcoming because of their own macho. They never overcome anything uh, that doesn't make the history books is someone being macho and out arguing somebody in the flesh. I mean, there was debates going on, but they were in the spirit and they were direct and they were dangerous, even coming from Jesus. Um, but they were they were in the spirit. They were real consi their cons uh, consistent answers with that word that is forever settled in heaven. Jesus would always refer to people who question him. Haven't you read the scriptures as this, this, as though it was common knowledge? And they would speak to the people as though they already, they should already know the scripture. How do you not know what I'm doing? Because in the arm of the flesh, your opinions about scripture is going to be wrong. And I'm telling you, all of our opinions about scripture is wrong until you see it for what it really is. Until there's a sense of the kingdom of God about it. Um, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The spirit of God comes and makes us see everything, including the scripture, under the right light. We need to see it under God's heavenly light. God, the Holy Ghost, is here to communicate life to the believer and to the, the sinner. How, wherever you are, He's there to communicate life. This is what it's all about for you. Direct. Exactly. Amazing. So I'm just saying, um, the, the, the gentleness must be there. You must have a delicateness. Same as a man who's strong to work real hard, long hours, day after day, seven days a week or whatever for his family because he loves his delicate family, his, his delicate wife and his delicate baby. You know, and it's the same way as a strong preacher. You must be strong to be bold in the battle, looking in the face of danger, what have you. But at the same time, um, you got to have that delicate time of, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I will bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm bowing before you. You are the strength of my life, God. I will never be above anyone else. I'll never be greater than any man. I'll always be just great when you move, Lord. You're going to make yourself so great in my life, but without you, I am nothing, God. And we have to know that. Uh, we want to get so used to walking with God that it almost looks like we're great, but we're not. You know, we really know where it's coming from. We 
you say, well, if I'm not plugged in, then it's not going to matter, you know? All of yesterday's stories are going to be just a bunch of talk today. And they can get you excited and all that, but we really need to be people that spend ample time until the, 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 the flip is, the switch is flipped in our heart. The switching of the flip, uh, flipping of the switch to come out and uh, cause us to see, cause us to stand. Kingdom standing, amen? And that's what God wants us to be. Um, so we got to be careful about the little things. I think God cares about that. I think David was like that. That's why he was so powerful in the Holy Spirit. And the macho man, Mr. Handsome and praise of man seeker called King Saul. God bless him because he did have the Holy Spirit at one point. Because he was authority. And if David won't speak against him, either will I. But he still was operating in the arm of the flesh. And when flesh that was bigger than him came along, his Goliath came along and proved that his arm of the flesh could only go so far. But the long arm of the Lord, his outstretched arm, his right hand and his outstretched arm is enough to take down anything. The Lord will go through the top of the myrtle trees um, and he will go before you. Um, you will hear a going forth in the top of the, the, the poplar trees or whatever trees it was in the Bible. Or else he'll send an angel or something like that and wipe out the enemy. And a lot of the times that you'll see the wars that happen with God's people, um, it was very small amount of power compared to what the, what, the, what the enemy had. They had huge walls, huge chariots, much more people, much more advanced in um, understanding of warfare and what have you. And yet God's people would prevail over them because God would be doing most of the killing throughout the Old Testament. People say, well, look at all this killing that they did. Well, if you read it right, most of the killing didn't happen from man's swords against the enemy, against the Philistines. It was God knocking out the enemies, including the Philistines and all the other terrible people that was trying to, you know, do things wrong in life. And God, God said, your, your cup is full. I'm going to send an army against you. Even though it looks like they're waving at their swords at you, all they're doing is just, they're not touching you, but I'm the one that's going to touch you. And I'm the one who's going to make your hair black or white. I'm the one who's going to cause life or death. Leprosy causes your hair to go white in a death kind of way. That's what that means. You don't have the power in the flesh to make a hair black or white. Amen. We have the power to make uh, ourselves seek the Lord until we have reality. Amen. We can never say this is going on until we have kingdom reality. Kingdom reality is all that, matter, that matters. And it could happen in our time frame. We think, oh, I'm going to seek the Lord. And then he's going to move or speak, seek to us, speak to us and speak the life to us and give us kingdom life. And it could take years. <laughs> it's not about how long it takes. It's about, is it real? Is it kingdom reality? Yes or no? That's what it's about. And uh, I tell him, God has given me a sense of that. Given me a chance to see places of fear of man in my life. The fear of change in my life. The fear of uh, loss in my life. The fear of being looked at bad. Uh, and my life, these are all idols. I, I was cruising down the road listening to my old Sinkholes video from my Holy Production Mount, Holy Mountain Production bit series about really hard topics, cult and conspiracies and whatever. And there's a part in there in the Sinkhole one where it's just exalting Jesus Christ in such a mighty way, way into the video. And it was just, I was about ready to start bursting into tears, imagining all my idols being crushed. I'm like, that's not, that's like an idol in my heart and I gotta crush it. I wanna bring a big bat and just crush it down, you know, and take these idols down. Like, Lord, I don't want anything in the way of my heart, nothing between me and the heart of the Father. I don't want anything between my heart and the heart of the Father. No, no compromises, no thinking patterns that don't line up with God's kingdom. Some things in this world, people say, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with it, so to speak. Um, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. Okay, meaning they might be not looking so big of a deal, but in the light of the kingdom, in its most profound state, it will look like a waste of time. It will look like a major distraction or a major bridge to uh, La La Land. It'll be a major bridge to doubt and unbelief and missing the mark as a person who really wants to serve the Lord vibrantly. Amen. Uh, just very uh, intricately leaning into the strength of God. That's where it's at. So I'm telling you, um, that really opened it up for me, man. I just seen that delicate thing. I'm like, do I care about this bug or what? And sometimes I don't care about bugs. There's so many bugs that get into the house or whatever. I just start doing things to them. I didn't used to do that, but I, I, I used to catch spiders with a container and throw them outside or whatever. But sometimes the bugs are so small, it's hard to catch them. So I just, I just, um, I take care of them another, I put them on the road to glory another way. I just, I don't like doing that, but it's just like, sometimes I get so tired of dealing with it that I just do that sometimes. But you know, God cares about the details. And that one he definitely cared about. And I feel like it's what he really wants us to see 
cannot be powerful in God. No man in this world, no believer in Jesus Christ can be powerful in the gospel from your own strength. Being macho is not the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Most High God. He's the macho one. He is the power. He's the infinite power and He moves and guides us in the right time that we need to. We don't need to walk around flexing our spiritual muscles all day long because He's going to be mighty when He wants to be and He's the one who's going to get the glory for it if it really is Him. Don't want to be a false prophet coming in our own name, you know, or you come in your own name and they'll receive me. But because I, Jesus said, because I come in, my, in the name of my Father, you, you won't receive me, you know. And so a lot of people won't like that. There's a lot of people who get really popular because of the arm of the flesh. A lot of preachers who do the same things. You see a lot of a lot of videos that get a lot of hits online, and um, you'll find out what they do. This is total flesh, major car wrecks, or talking talking snotty to the officers and whatever and. Um, the list just goes on and on about stuff that's just normal fleshly world has nothing to do with Jesus Christ at all and you'll see Christians using that same thing that gets people's attention to, to try to use that to um, compromise the way that they do things in order to get attention that's, that's called a bait and trick bait and switch and a trick hopefully we don't do that <laughs> amen we want to do things the proper way. Amen. Um, anyways, I've been seeing lots of comments on, on board, and I can try to answer them another time. Um, I might be doing quick answers like this, and if they're not really like something I really want, I can put them on a, my, my other YouTube pages that hardly anybody knows about. And then I'll send them to you. That way you can have a verbal answer to the questions. If you have a, if you have a query, a question, you have a different argument, or you want to ask why do I believe that what I believe, and eventually I'm going to try to put on a... Um, uh, a statement of faith on the very front of my page and just leave it there. That way everybody knows exactly what I'm getting into, so what I believe in. Yes, I believe in the conspiracies. Yes, I believe in the King James Bible. Yes, I believe the world is round. Yes, I believe you can lose your salvation. Yes, I believe you have to repent. And God has to bring kingdom reality to you for you to be born again of the Spirit of God. This is not a light thing. It's not a decision. It's a miracle. And I, I want to believe, believe for the things of God to be what they're supposed to be. To seek and to find and I don't want people to say that they found because someone told you that they found, you know what I mean? So I want to have my own layout of all these things. These things are worthy of discussion. I don't I don't get everything right. I don't know everything, but I have a lot to, to, to stand upon because of the things that the Lord has already guided me in thus far, leaving obvious um, uh, assumptions of what what's what according to the Word of God. That's how I, get, that's how I look at the Bible. I believe God does speak to people today. Um, I should hear my voice and another, a stranger they will not follow, amen? Anyway. So anyways, that's all for now. Um, but yeah, sensitivity to the Holy Spirit was the main word. I just got a little off track, excuse me. But um, that's what we want. We want to be strong in the Lord, meaning we have to be sensitive to the Lord. Otherwise, we're just talking about a God that we're not paying attention to. And He deserves an incredible, um, intricate um, focus to be broken before Him. He's the high and the lofty, He dwells in the high and the holy place. And those with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. So we go to prayer with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Things that make you proud and distract you, put your phone away or whatever it is that you got to do to be just undistracted and, and focus intently on the Holy Spirit just for a little while. Develop that prayer closet in that kind of manner every day. And I promise you, you're going to start to prophesy like never before. God is going to open up the scripture to you like never before and open up your evangelism like never before. And I'm telling you, if we can all start doing that, man, it's going to be a lot of iron sharpening iron. I need it. I need people to sharpen me up. I don't know everything, but praise God, I'm learning and I want to I want to grow with all the brothers and sisters out there. I mean, with all their heart, no matter what doctrine you have, I mean, with all your heart to stand for the God of, the, the, of, of Scripture. You mean to stand for the God of Scripture. Bible. Amen. So if that's what you mean, uh, I'm with you on that page and we have unity thus far. The blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen.